Sha boa sas uilik pelador you voili and shinigas capital and brush your curl start and cool day. Margreb only dig la he canish na hair and went to mark na pelodori, agus na homone, rot nor hard la good ishin. Dear you gar in a tear and shinner la he canish na homone. The we crave na hair na shell of na galiva, agus u voili suck la he canish, don gay do we real. Connors have been to the meek to rave ray. But what would you say to people when they say, Ah, sure, Offaly have no tradition at all? That sort of thing must annoy yourself who played for Offaly and for so long. Well, I'd say Offaly has the best tradition in Holland and nearly of any county in Ireland for the simple reason is they were founded at the very first year of the foundation mm. and they were able to get nowhere and they plugged along, plugged along and they had both minor, junior and senior teams every year. In the 20s, we had uh, what was considered to be a marvellous junior team, won in all Ireland, and then immigration once again struck awfully, and the majority of them went to New York, and uh, as you, from the records you will see that awfully were then the predominant county in New York. Of course, in fact, that's been a, a feature of New York championships, that awfully has been one of the strongest clubs out there, hasn't it? Well, that's true, because we've suffered in this county so much from immigration over a period. Like, again, we were going pretty well in the 40s, early 50s, and then uh, people like Brendan Dolan, Des Dooley, etc., they all immigrated and there our hopes went again for a good senior hurling team. John, where do you think this uh, recovery, if you like, started in hurling? Was it the victory of the footballers in the early 70s that egged on the hurlers? No, Mick, I wouldn't think so. I think that uh, our close run in under-21 hurling in 1966, uh, where we were defeated by Dublin in the Leinster final, uh, like you had Damien Martin and Johnny Flaherty involved in that particular team. And I think that that is from there that the enthusiasm stemmed once again. We're standing here now right on the border in the middle of the Shannon, well, on the bridge over the middle of the Shannon. And how far over would your native Kilimer Daly you played with from here? How far about, would it be from uh, here? About 20 miles away, Michael. Um, played with Kilimer Daly for a good many years, and 78 was a bad year for me. Not alone was a drop from the county panel, but I was dropped also from the Kilimer Daily Club team that year. So after that disappointment, Tom, you didn't play for a while. How did you get involved with Offaly then? Well, the, the first thing that happened to me, Mick, was that I got involved with the Offaly football team when Eugene McGee invited me to train the team in a, about March or April 79. Uh, we got to the Leinster final that year. And we, it was a bitter disappointment when we were beaten by Dublin, as you know, in the last minute. But um, then last year, I was still very much involved with football all through last year, and uh, we won the Leinster Championship. And here you are now involved with both of the teams in the final, training one and playing with the other one. Yes, Mick, isn't it wonderful? Any person, I suppose, would be glad to be involved with one in All-Ireland, but for myself and Liam Corms to be involved with the two... It doesn't leave you with too much free time, though. Not too much free time, Mick. You'd want to ask my wife, Rita, about it. She doesn't see me very often, especially at evenings and nights. But uh, if we get something out of it this year, I'm sure she'll be happy enough. In fact, some of my best friends are on the Galway team. PJ Malai is a relation of mine, and I'm looking forward to meeting them after the, the day after the well, match. You've and been fairly close to PJ during the match as well. Yes, we could meet on the... and you were right corner back. Yeah, we've been meeting throughout the summer, and uh, we've had a few jokes about it all right. And, well, we'll have to wait and see how it goes. People are simply on hurling football mad and awfully at the moment. And I'd say they have been used to going through it before from a football point of view, but it's completely new from a hurling point of view. Andy, there is this feature now of Offaly appearing in their first All-Ireland final, the atmosphere and their first 60,000 crowd. Now, as team manager, how can you prepare them for that? Yeah, well, we feel that that is not going to be a problem as far as we're concerned. It won't be a big problem. The thing that we are talking to our players at the moment is, even though it, it may be an All-Ireland final with 60, 65,000 people, but the way they've got to look on it, it's still only 70 minutes hurling. And we believe that our team have got used to pressure, maybe not from a point of view of crowds, but we feel the National League last year where we were committed to playing six games away from home. We were under pressure before we ever struck a ball in the National League. And uh, going away on six occasions to play the top six teams in the country and winding up with nine points did an awful lot for us from that point of view. Um, the same thing happened this year with the Leinster final. Like, there was an awful lot of people who believed that Last year's win over Lee Kenny was a once-off effort as far as Offaly was concerned. And we contended with a lot of pressure as far as the Leinster final is concerned. Mm. That's a terrible thing that you sort of have to come out and prove yourselves the, the second year. 
Yeah, but it's a good thing in a way. Oh, it is. Like, I think we when you do it. Ourselves. When we did it, yeah, we did it in the last final. I think we proved ourselves a good team, mm. despite the fact there was an awful lot of pressure on us. And there'll be only twice as many people in Cork Park on All Ireland Day. An awful lot of people tell us about this All Ireland Day atmosphere that when when teams go out on the pitch, they get all nervous. So we just don't know. We have to take it as it comes. So it must be a very proud moment now for you to see the county in an All Ireland final. Well, I'll tell you the truth, there's one thing I never imagined that I'd, I'd come around, to be quite honest. I was more than thrilled last year in winning their first league, and I thought it was one thing that never happened either. Well, seeing that the one that came back again and proved themselves this year, it was no flu. And of course... The and they were very unlucky last year in the All-Ireland semi-final, I thought. Not only is it their first All-Ireland final, but this year too, they were in their first National League final. That's correct, yes, for the first time ever, and put up, we started off a very bad start, and fought back late Tigers after it. They were a wonderful team in the league final. And if they play as well in the All-Ireland final, I have no fear but they'll win the All-Ireland. Well, she's not a very solid boy like Pocah Wawans in Emmert. Tommy Dragan is the first time that he's got a lot of money. When he's got a lot of money, he's got a lot of money, he's got a lot of money. And if he's got a lot of money, 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 he's got a lot of money. And now there's some action down at the tunnel. Here come Galway. Sean Silk out in front with Michael Keneally. No tunnel he got on. Cyril Farrell just got on there ahead. The trainer, Lyle McInerney. And his wife, Barry, in red there. She's the doctor to the team. I remember talking to Niall some time ago and... Uh, we discovered, in fact, that we were some way or other distantly related. And the way he's playing today, uh, well, one is proud of the fact that we are some way related. I noticed that Jimmy Cooney is uh, a little bit stiff. Just this is the Aussie team, of course, coming out, but uh, they're looking a little bit uh, sadder, if you like, and I'm sure they've got some roasting in the dressing room. But looking here, I saw Jimmy Cooney, the left full back for... Galway, just down here on our right, he seemed to have a thigh trouble, and he's been running around, up and down, trying to loosen it out. Meanwhile, out in the centre of the field, we have Joachim Kelly back at centre field, and there along with them is Liam Currums, and of course, number eight for Galway on the right, that is Michael Connolly, and number nine is Steve Mahon. And there don't appear to be any personnel changes in the off team, all set for the second half. 13 points to 7 in favour of Galway. And referee Frank Murphy looking at that watch very carefully as he gets ready to throw in the ball. And the finger of authority sending a couple of players back from being too near and it is Galway gone into the attack already. Michael Connolly showing soon. Johnson's been chasing, nicely blocked down by Dean Perham, to the ball brought out over the sideline by Sean Silk, who seems to have a little bit of stepping out of boot trouble. Oh, yes, it is in fact a Galway ball, and it's taken by P.J. Malloy. John Connolly. High searching ball. Gone out over the end line, it's wide. And Tom Dunahoo got it up there. Tom Dunahoo of Offley and up there over the eye. He's calling for assistance. He has the ball, but he won't part with the ball until he gets assistance. Just there in the corner of the eye, he's still waving at them to come on, although he's going up to take his position on Finn Barganthe. He's still calling for them to come in. And I think uh, Frank Murphy is the fear of God put into the mentors that nobody wants to come in. From the puck out, it's Iggy Clark. Finn Barganthe. Still Finn Barganthe. And the referee... 
and Tom Donahue is telling the referee, will you please ask somebody to come in and have a look at this? And Frank signals that there is assistance one. The attendance 71,384, and that is the correct attendance. Thank you. And retaken well down in front of the doorway. Go on wide. And uh, Johnny Flaherty waiting for something to happen. Tom Donahoe being attended to, seems to be all right, and Michael Kennedy with the pucker. Another good one, 45 metres out. Timbuk Atley picking away from Tom Donahue, or is he? This is all lane. And it's wide, it's wide. Forced to take a shot under pressure there. He shot a little bit sooner than he wanted to, and off the side netting. All taking his place. Damien Martin takes the puck out. Off his followers beginning to feel that it's about time something happened. Brandon Birmingham. Lyle McInerney gone out to it. And when things are going right for you, things go right for you. This is Steve Mahan. Wackham Kelly in pursuit, but pursuit is what it is. Burnley Ford. Finbar Gantley. And the referee penalises Tom Dunahoe for pushing in the back. A free to goal range, dead straight in front of the goal, and Joe Connolly to take it. Brendan Keisham is coming into the off the team. He just wait, waiting now for the free to be taken. And I think Joe tried to get that one over the railway wall. He didn't succeed in that, but he did get it over the crossbar. Galway 14 points, off the one goal and four. That's the eighth point of the game for Joe. And here's Brendan Keeshan coming into the game for Offley. And Damian Martin waiting. Brandon Keesham, it looks like Tom Donahue who's going off, and uh, Jer Coughlin is going back. Yes, Jer Coughlin is uh, going at right full back. Brandon Keesham is left half back. Nice bit of feeling there. Aiden Fogarty trying to get it away. There's Tom Donahue going off the field. This is Liam Currams. We have Austin in an attacking position. Mark Cardigan up to Cordy Corden. Cordy ready to have the free there for holding a hurley. Johnny Flaherty's hurley was held. And I wonder will he try for a goal? A goal could be very, very helpful for Austin and very, very important at this stage of the game. Cordy Corden is the man who usually takes these and he's got lasting possibility. The goal is lined, and here comes Porrick. No, oh, he's satisfied. It's early, yes, he seems to think, and he sends it over for a point. Simply taken, making the score. 14 points for the Galway men. One goal and five for Offley. And Porrick Horan, who took the easy score, six points between them, and hurling being the game it is, maybe it was a wise decision. With only five minutes gone in the second half. Ball for Offley. Just outside the 45 meter line, Brendan Keeson to take it. And out over the end line and wide. Score remains. Goldway 14, Offley 1 5. Michael Keneally. Look at the width of the box of that hurling. Johnny Flaherty waiting for the ball to come back into him. Peter 
Rose trying to get it out to Wacken Kelly. Then to Birmingham. On back to it now. Sophie Lenard. Out is Pat Carroll. Pat Carroll getting inside his fan. Corey Corden. And there's a chance. Right across the goal now. Pat Kerwin. And the ball got out by Niall McInerney. Out to Pat Carroll, however. Pat shot is high and Pat shot is over the bar. Ford after him, and the ball on out over the sideline for a line ball for Galway, Steve Mahon to take it. Steve decides no, Sylvie, you take it. And it's Sylvie Lenan, not a good one, looking to get away with the second chance with it. And Sylvie still going into attack, and boom! It grounded him, but he's all right. Dermot Heaney, the awfully trainer, anxious, and why not? Nicky Clark trying to get it away, and Nicky sends it over the sideline. Nine ball for Offley, just outside the 45-meter line. Aiden Fogarty to take the line ball. Nice high one. John Silk, line ball for Offley, but a good deal further back down the field. Joe Cunningham, or Joe Cochran to, Joe Cochran to uh, take it. And to be to get that one fall, but Pat Callan snaps it up very quickly. No, it could have been kept him. It was no, 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 no. The linesman signaled it was wide. Linesman signaled it wide there. So the score remains: 14 points for Galway, one goal and six. That is nine points for Offley. And Offley coming back now with a lot more bite in the attack than earlier on. Pat Kerwin top of the right. Pat Carroll. Uh, right half forward on the Offley team. And John Connolly, centre half forward, and Joe back in full forward again, and another uh, turn of the switch. This is Bernie Ford. DJ Malloy. Joachim Kelly. Confidence there by Seamus Cohen. And of Birmingham. Scale right there. Sylvie Lanard. Joachim Kelly from way out the field, it's high but it's wide. And the score remains, 14 points for Galway and one goal and six for Rothley. Joachim beginning to wake up and it certainly hasn't been a great game so far for this man who usually is so good. Pulled and it is, I'm sure, a linesman's ball there, or is it? A 
linesman was nearer to her than I was, but uh, it is a linesman's ball, and Pat Kerwin is down being attended to. And it flashed there. It is a linesman's ball over on the far side. Pat Kerwin shaken. And the ball thrown in on the far side of the field. P.J. Malloy trying to add to it. No lane. P.J. Malloy way out the field. That is why. The score remains. Score by 14 points. Offley. One goal and six. Pat Cowan has resumed. He's looking kind of pale up there on the right corner, but uh, he was shaken with that uh, knock that he got on the side of the nose. Joachim, Joachim Kelly. Brendan Keeshan. Steve Mahan. No lane. Pat Carroll after him, but no. Still going. Still going. And he sends it over the bar for a nice point, having started his run about 65 meters from his own goal on the far side of the field. Wound up inside the off the 45 meters on this side of the field and now makes the score Galway 15 points to one goal and six that's 15 to nine Liam Currams Michael Connolly beaten in two of them and this is Bernie Ford Ball knocked away by Eugene Cochran, who's done a couple of very nice ones of that today. After Joe Connolly. And Joe's shot just goes over the end line. Why, Damian Martin is in a hurry. Not only is he changing his hurley, but he's discarding his stick. Bernie Ford uh, shaken there. Seems to be weary. One great game. What a drive that is. This is Aiden Fogarty. Lean Curran. He's got Pat Carroll inside him, but he's going on. He takes his shot and he sends it over. A nice point by Liam Curran, working his way through there as if he had a fried egg in a frying pan, and then sending it over the bar. Galway, 15, Offley, 1-7. That is just five points between them and there's Pat you can see he's now you can see his nose there but we follow on with the action because the action is all here Steve Mahan bringing it out over the sideline line ball far side of the field and I can't help thinking what a burst of excitement there would be if Offley got a goal 20 minutes left in the game five points between them Galway deserving to lead no doubt about that Corey Corden from way out the field. Johnny Flaherty tries to keep it in play, but falls over a night on as he goes out over the end line with the ball and wide. line. A signal from trainer Healy to put the ball over the bar. Well, he did. He read the signal right and it's over the bar. And now only four points between the team. Pat Delaney, the scorer. Galway 15 points. Offley from 8. 15 to 11. Is this game building to a climax or is it? Gordon 
together. Jimmy Cooney. Not as long a clearance as he would have liked, but the direction is good. It was good. It went to Michael Connolly, and the referee penalises Michael for using his boot there in an unorthodox uh, way. And there is a free for offering inside the 65 metre line, just inside the sideline down here. Pat Delaney. Too far, it's gone out, it's gone wide. Corey Core on top of the left, Johnny Flaherty full forward. The latest move of Arfley to try and put Sting into the attack. Here's Johnny, he's gone in full forward on Niall O'Mahony, or Niall McInerney, I should say. Four points between them. 34 breaking away and still four points between them. As for wides, they have 13 apiece. Damien Martin's puck out. John Connolly. Oh, not a very long one for John. Joachim getting the ball on the bounce there. And the ball pulled out. Carwin's going racing in after. It's going towards the end line. It's gone over. Just a burst of excitement there. But the ball wide. Johnny Flaherty getting a rinse of the magic bottle. Hook out. By Michael Keneally, there's a sub on. Danny Owens is on for Offley. I don't know who's gone off at the moment. It's no lane with the ball, and again, he has picked it off the ground. Three to Offley. Sub going off. Cordy, I don't know. Cordy Corden is going out to take the free. Gone off up here on the right is Pat Kerwin. Yes, Pat Kerwin has gone off. Pat was injured a few moments ago, you will remember. Four record to take a very important shot indeed. 50 metres out, 10 in from the far sideline. And here it is. It's hopping dangerously in there. It's got now to Mark Corrigan. Corrigan getting ready to take a shot. He takes a shot and he sends it wide. And the score remains. Galway up there in front. The champions in the lead by 15 points to one goal and eight. Four points between these teams. Nicely held in the air there by Michael Connolly. He can't get it away. Liam Perham. He'll be let on there for Galway. Up down to Noel Lane. And Bernie Ford come across now to this side of the field. But there was another switcher. Yes, there is. That ball gone wide. Bernie Ford, top of the left, and Ben Park Anthony, top of the right. And uh, Pat Murray has followed Bernie Ford over to the opposite wing. P.J. Malloy coming back to sweep up that ball. What a delightful striker he is. Brendan Kingston. Jimmy Cooney, Brendan Keesham, and a free to Offley from 65 metres out from their own goal. Four points between them, and we are in the 21st minute. Ready now for this dropping ball as Paddy Delaney sends it in. And a great save by Michael Canini. It looked like a second point, but he's a big one, a tall one, a game one. But back to Waffley again now. Liam Currums, he's forgotten something. It's the ball. Out now comes Jimmy Cooney with Waffley men around him all round the place. And he gets his puck in. Joe Connolly. And Phil Jones. Nothing inside him but grass. Five 
five minutes that could prove a little bit expensive. Fifteen wide for Galway, fifteen wide for Offley, and a wonderful save there by Michael Kennedy a few moments ago. Ball gone out over the sideline, and the pace and the humidity and heat beginning to tell on them all. Sidney Lenans, sideline puck, Finbar Gaffney getting it high in the air. There Coughlin trying to cut him off. Wide, wide, he had gone wide. Finbar Gaffney tried and tried and tried, and he looks a little bit disgusted. The other end of the field. This policing is going on and on and on. Now this is Kenny Owens. Kenny Owens out now to... Oh! And Carroll hesitated for a moment. He thought it was gone too far. If he didn't hesitate, he might. Underline might have got there. Line ball for Galway. Jimmy Turney to take it. Good as a good one. In towards the goal, but Sean Safe blocking it down. And Eugene Kaplan in possession. Everybody momentarily seemed to stand up there. Kendrick Birmingham and a save by Michael Panini. What a great game he's played. And a nice bit of feeding there by Aiden Fogarty. Oh dear. Not exactly where he would have liked it to go. Michael Connolly. And Pat Murray. Yes, the referee has penalized Bernie Ford for pushing, for pushing Pat Murray off the ball there. When Bernie had no uh, he had no hurry, but he kept going on. And the referee deemed that he pushed uh, Pat Murray off the ball. So there is a free for Offley to be taken about 35 meters out of the wrong road. Less than 10 minutes left in the game, four points between them. And Flory's puck is a good one. And Danny Owen really got that one, but didn't. This is Jimmy Cooney, and Carroll is after him. And they can kick football and go away too, as well we know. Nice feeding there by Pat Delaney. Back come off me now. A shot, they shot the tie, a shot that's good, and now there are only three points between them. Just the puck of the ball. Galway 15 points, off the one line, 15 to 12. Less than 10 minutes left in the game, about eight and a half or thereabouts. The crowd really beginning to beat, beat, beat with the action now. And this is Frank Burke. Frank Burke going right through. Go back, my boy. Frank is on the ground, as you can see. Oh, a very nice tip out there by Frank, too. Malloy, Malloy, to know that. Great save. Oh, another great save. Goalkeepers are certainly brilliant today. Damien Martin stretching for that one and deflecting it round. Four at 65. And here it is coming up again. This is where they're 
ball in a heap, as it were. The shot's coming across, and here's the shot, and there's the save. What a save. And here is the result in 65. And Frank Murphy is going like a hare over to the far side. And it has gone wide, and the score is Galway 15 points, opening good line. Over 27 minutes gone in the second half. What is going to happen? Well, your guess is as good as mine. Oh, there was strength in that one, but it didn't go as far as he liked. Aiden Fogarty, over to the wing to Brendan Kingston. And it's still somehow or other Brendan Keisha. And he's still there, but not for now. The ball is whipped away. Bernie Ford now. And Bernie shot goes up in wide. Eighteen wide for Galway. Fifteen wide for Offley. 15 points for Galway, one goal and nine points for Offlane, that's 15 to 12. Two points between these sides a year ago, when they met in the semi-final. And here come the Offlane man again, Liam Curran. Oh, an intended pass has gone all screwy, but Brendan Keisham is in there. The ball goes out now to Frank Burke. Joachim Kelly is in there. Pat Carroll is in there. They're all in there. with it now, and with him, chasing him, is Bernie Ford, but the Austin man gets his puck in. Michael Connolly and Liam Curran, Danny Owens. Danny Owens in there, and this is Pat Carroll. Oh, Pat's got careering across the field, being chased by Joe Connolly. And it's Johnny, Johnny has it, Johnny Flaherty with it now, and he steadies himself, he takes a shot, and now there are only two points between them, as Johnny Flaherty doing a balancing act with the ball. His first point of the game, but a valuable one to put Offley within two points of the leaders. Galway, 15 points. Offley, one goal and 10. 15 to 13. Michael Keneally. And out it comes to Steve Mahan. Steve Mahan, the ball that's high. A ball that has gone wide. Five minutes left in the game. Two points between them. And they, whoever they are, were right. Here comes Damien Martin. DJ Malloy. Michael Connolly. Bill Michael Connolly. And it is done. Dangerous to do the goal. It comes out now the way to Bernie Ford. Bernie, a hop and he shot in towards the goal. Out now towards Bernie Ford again. Dangerous ball across the goal, but knocked down and cleared out. Getting near the sideline, far side of the field, Mark Clinton, uh, Mark Clinton is under it. Oh boy. And uh, the ball goes up along the far side of the field. It is cleared out by Jar Cochran. Comes in the centre to Joachim Kelly. Joachim cut up down by Steve. And Steve trying still to beat Brendan Keeshan. And Brendan's cut to this side of the field. Owens. Owens getting inside. He's going right through. He has a ball on his stick. He takes his shot, but he's hooked by Iggy Clark. And Iggy is after him now. And Iggy beats him. And Iggy gets the ball out the field. Way out the field. Where Pat Delaney goes up for it. And Pat Delaney grabs it. Pat going up field now. Three ball way right about to descend on him. Make that ball. In down to Brendan Birmingham. Birmingham inside to Flaherty. Flaherty is inside. Now the ball is in and it's a goal. Yeah. 
Cody Coleman with that cup in his hand. He has it, he has it, he's taken it, I think. Now it's coming, there it is! The McCarthy Cup in the hands of Offley with the first time in history. But there's a man that has every right to hold it high, Benny and Watson. Congratulations to Offley on a wonderful achievement. And your first visit in all our to the Enthroned Champions. We congratulate them on the fine hurling they displayed today. I must say, I would like to congratulate all those concerned in both counties, teachers and all the club officials who are doing so much for the revival of hurling. Because this has been a tremendous year for hurling. We have rising standards, tremendous attendances, and more people playing our game. I would like them to, at this moment to again congratulate all concerned and present the cup to the captain, Patrick Horry. And there's the moment. And I bet there'll be silence now as Horry gets ready, not just now, but when Horry makes his speech, I'd say there will be a fair share of fun. The world has our fan current shot at Locker of Sir Quinn, the Gumlitter, the Dina Hasuvaya. What are you? Ladies and gentlemen, it's great to be an Offaly man today, boy. I'd like to thank a number of people. First of all, the county board in general, our selectors, our trainer and our coach Andy Gallagher and Dermot Healy. I'd like to thank on behalf of the team, I'd like to thank the supporters. And I'd like to pay tribute to a great Galway team. They were great champions. I hope we can do just as good and we'll be mighty proud as well. Thanks. I'd like to take this opportunity to wish the footballers luck and we'll be back here to see Richie Connor and Sam McGuire. Thank you. And down there, there is a banner that truly tells the story. The faithful never die. And it was their consistency, refusal to die, that won them the All Ireland as they killed the Dean Galway team. So, off they join the roll of honour, the counties that have won the All-Ireland, there are now 13 in all. this year and he leads the singing <laughs>